Hey guys, Ivan here and this video we are starting with this new physique update or should I say a leg update of Nick Walker. So last year one of the things that he was criticized for the most probably was his leg size and I'm not talking about a side leg, I'm definitely not talking about the glutes and hamstrings, I'm talking about quads, legs from the front and it's not like his legs are small, I'm just talking about one specific muscle and that's his lateral head. To give you an example of a really well developed lateral head or so called outer sweep, I'll go to the extreme and I'll show you Big Ramy. So, as you can see, Big Ramy is probably the best example of a really developed outer head, and it really creates an illusion of having a really big leg. So, a lot of guys can't simply develop this, so they try to build up their adductors. But if you have good leg genetics like Big Ramy does, your lateral head grows, and it's more aesthetic to have a really good lateral head or outer sweep than to have really thick adductors. There are guys like for example Dave Palombo who you would never say had small legs, he had big legs but there wasn't much going on in the outer part, all the mass was mainly in the inner part of the legs. Another great example of a dominant lateral head is Hari Chupan, he has great looking legs, they look very aesthetic and very very good, very dominant. Now going back to Nick Walker, if you take a look at his physique before, I think this was his first show, and the way it progressed later, I think it could have taken a different direction, I think he had a potential to build up big lateral head, to have really sweepy legs around, instead he really grew his vastus medialis or so called teardrop and his adductors. Do his legs look massive? Yes, but do they look aesthetic, does he have that pop that creates an X frame? Not really. Comparing him to somebody like Brandon Curry, he doesn't look that bad because Brandon Curry is an extreme in uh, basically no outer head, as you can see his lateral head is pretty much non-existent, there is nothing going on there, however his adductors are pretty massive and they are making up for the lack of the outer sweep, so his legs are looking decent enough, decent enough for them to let him win the Mr. Olympia once, but probably not again, not against Big Remy or other guys who actually have good legs. So here is an extreme example of somebody who has basically no lateral head. Now what is the reason? Again, I said I could have seen Nick's physique, Nick's legs take a different direction. Is it all genetic or could it be also training? I think it could have something to do with training. So I listened to Joe Bennett, also known as hypertrophy coach, and he says that vastus medialis, the teardrop, is mainly being activated when you are doing the last part of the motion. So some people, I think he spoke about Jay Cutler doing this, were doing quarter reps or third part of the rep or like half reps and really focusing on locking the weight on the upper part of the motion in order to actually build up more vastus medialis. If you want to activate a lateral head, the outer part, the sweep, then you need to go super deep all the way down and Nick is definitely not going anywhere close to all the way down as you can see, so it could be that, it could be the reason. Now Nick is training like a maniac, he's always going to failure, he's really lifting heavy, but I don't think he's really targeting that outer head doing this, at least that's what I understand listening to the experts who are explaining the training. Anyways, it has been a year after that Mr. Olympia, after his entire 2021 season and he definitely made a lot of progress, I think his arms grew a lot and now, based on this physique update, it looks like his legs are really much much bigger. Now how much is this glutes and hamstrings? I don't know, but it looks like he definitely grew those quads too. Here is another photo, I mean we all know he looks good in side poses, his legs do, but in the front ones what's his outer sweep looking like, that's what we are more interested about and I don't really see a change in structure, I think his legs are still very much vastus medialis, teardrop dominant, but did he grow his legs? I think he absolutely did, I think in these photos his legs are looking freaking massive. Let's say his main competition is Hunter Labrara, because he beat him last year by one spot and he thinks he should have placed higher or that he should have beaten Hunter and here is what I'm trying to tell you about his structure, so as you can see Hunter's legs are longer than Nick's, 
and they are in the same ratio here, I don't know about the height, they are similar height, maybe Hunter is like an inch taller, I don't know, but you can see the ratio, so Hunter's upper body, Hunter's torso is shorter and his legs are longer, compared to Nick who is exact opposite, so as you can see Nick's torso is a little bit longer and his legs are a little bit shorter, he's a little bit stubbier. And it's definitely better to have longer legs, that is good proportion, that is what the judges are looking for. One of the best examples for this is Dorian Yates, I mean all of the Mr. Olympias have good proportions, good symmetry, but Dorian is a perfect example because he had a little bit shorter torso and longer legs. With enough mass in his legs, he looked really aesthetic because of this. And that is something the judges are paying attention to, I don't know how much the audience knows about these things, but this is the structure the judges are looking for, longer legs, shorter torso. And that is one of the flaws that Nick Walker has, structural flaw, which he cannot change. He can do whatever he can, he can make his legs bigger, he can try to grow his lateral head, but he can't change the structure. And of course, everybody has some disadvantages, some flaws, and they can only try to make their physiques as good as they can with what they got. Now here is another photo of Nick from behind, as you can see his calves are huge as well. And I think Nick should really get some custom made t-shirts, because he his width to height ratio is so skewed up, it's a mess, I mean he's super super wide for being so short, it's ridiculous, so when he finds a shirt that fits, it's too long and he looks like he's wearing a skirt and no pants, no shorts, nothing, so it looks kind of funny, he should definitely get some custom made t-shirts because his proportions are so crazy, so ridiculous, nobody has proportions like this, nobody is this wide at this height. Anyways, the overall conclusion about Nick is that he definitely made a lot of progress in his legs, his legs are up in mass, and he's about 19 weeks, 19 full weeks out of Mr. Olympia, so if he keeps progressing, if he keeps uh, blasting, and I think he will, I think he was off for the period before the Mr. Olympia, before his prep started, and about 20 weeks out he started blasting, and now he's growing into the show, he's getting harder and leaner, and he's definitely getting bigger, I don't know for how long is he gonna keep progressing, but if he keeps it at this rate, uh, he's gonna be a freaking monster on that stage, and I can't wait to see that. Alright, let's move on from the monsters, and let's talk about something more aesthetically pleasing, and that's Ramon Dino, possibly the challenger, the runner-up at this year's Mr. Olympia, I personally have him in my top two, I think he's going to be the one to be pushing Chris Bumstead for that title, I don't see him beating Chris, not this year, I think probably never, I think Chris is gonna retire before uh, Ramon beats him, but he could be the next Mr. Olympia winner, because he has all the tools necessary. Now, somebody pointed this out to me, this is probably the only flaw, let's not even call it a flaw, but the only thing that I that I noticed about his physique that doesn't really look right, maybe, uh, it's his forearms. Somebody told me this, that his forearms are just overly, overly dominating his physique, and they make his arms look uh, smaller, because his forearms, as you can see, are freaking huge. And I don't know how many people notice this, but he has really big forearms, and his arms are not small, by any means, he has really good arms, but his forearms are just taking over the illusion, they are making his arms look even smaller, so I, that, that's not something you see every day, especially not in classic physique guys having forearms like this, this reminds me of Phil Heath a little bit, so I don't know what he's doing as far as training, but if he's doing any hammer curls, stuff like that, he should definitely drop that and stop doing that, he should definitely focus only on his arms and not, not do anything to his forearms, just go lighter and like focus on the biceps and triceps or hit those forearms, I mean I would love to have a body part that is too big, but if you're talking about bodybuilding, you know, classic physique on the stage, this could hurt his illusion. If you take a look at this photo though, you can also see that his chest could be bigger and thicker, Chris Bumstead has crazy chest, and big chest really helps in classic physique, so uh, that's another thing that I would have to point out, but other than that, it looks like he progressed, he looks really, you know, really hard and full, considering his body fat percent, I mean, he is very lean too, but he's not like contest shredded, and as you can see, his quads, his glutes, his hamstrings, shoulders, arms, everything looks just really, really tick, you know, I think this guy is definitely making progress uh, from competition to competition, and if he brings conditioning at a Mr. Olympia, and I'm sure he will, he looked awesome at the Arnold Classic, 
So if he brings that conditioning and he comes a little bit improved, I definitely do have him beating Terence Ruffin and everybody else in that lineup, aside from Chris Bumstead. I don't see him beating Chris, but second place in the Mr. Olympia would be a huge achievement. Six weeks are left until the Arnold Classic UK and right now in this photo you're probably looking at the best UK competitor James Hollingshead, see if he is that. Now in his gym videos, photos, whatever, he looks incredibly massive, big, round, it's insane, this guy looks like an absolute freak, but on the stage it doesn't translate as well. I'm not saying he looks bad on stage, but he looks better in the gym. Now, here is a photo of himself at six weeks out, so conditioning is definitely not gonna be a problem. It's never a problem for James. He always gets very lean. There are areas of his body where he's not super detailed, such as lower back, probably. As you can see, he has some skin folding issues, I would say. Uh, his skin looks a little bit thicker from behind, even though he's super lean and his back is super massive. It just doesn't really flow that well in this pose. His lower body, though, in this pose looks sick, but his back and arms, it never really looked good to me. Did he improve that? I think so. I think his shoulders, arms, overall back looks better, bigger, improved, and he trained like a beast the entire year. I mean, he basically embarrassed himself at the Mr. Olympia, and he wasn't so happy about that. From what I understood, he overdied it. He wanted to be peeled. He was really, really focused. He thought he was gonna do really good. And if you watch Fuad Abiyad's podcast, and James is very often a guest over there, I can say he's a co-host. Fuad Abiyad is really praising James, and he often thinks and says that James is like a top six bodybuilder in the world. And James believed that. He really thought he was gonna be top six, but he failed. He was coached by Patrick Tour at the time, but is that the case still? No. I think they are kind of chatting, they are speaking, but it looks like James is prepping himself right now. He spoke about this at Fuad's podcast, I can't find the exact minute to show you guys, but he said that he's making his own decisions right now, and he had a, like, a massive cheat meal, and Ford asked him what uh, Patrick Tour thinks about it. Are they still working together? Because Patrick is really anti-cheat meals. He doesn't allow that in his diet. And James said that currently he is making his own decisions. So basically he's not working with Patrick. Anyways, in this photo right here, you're looking at uh, James Hollingshead's condition at six weeks out of uh, British Grand Prix. So you can be sure that he's going to be shredded. The question now is, can he really win that show? Because I thought he was the heavy favorite to win that show, being one of the best, if not the best, British bodybuilder in the world right now. But you guys know who is coming at Toronto Classic UK. That's Andrew Jacked. Can James Hollingshead beat Andrew Jacked? Well, if you consider that this Texas Pro was 70-80% of uh, Andrew Jack, that he wasn't even 90%, and that he's probably gonna be at least 90, if not 100, at Arnold Classic UK, <sighs> yeah, I'm a big fan of James Hollis here, I'm a huge fan, but I gotta say he has no chance. He stands no freaking chance against against this monster right here. I think Andrew Jack is going to win that Arnold Classic UK easily, pretty easily. I think the only real competition of Andrew Jack is like top six at the Mr. Olympia. I think he can win pretty much any show that the qualified guys are not doing. I'm not so sure about William Bonek. He didn't qualify last year, but he improved significantly this year when he when he won Boston Pro, so I don't know about that, I don't know if he could beat uh, Bonag, but everybody else out of that top 5, top 6, I think he can easily beat. So even though James improved significantly, I just don't think he's that good, and Andrew, <laughs> he's a freak, man, he's something that we haven't seen in a long time, and a lot of people are saying that he's like the best physique in the world right now, and I get that, I would say that he's probably my favorite physique in the world right now, I think he looks better than Big Grammy, than Brandon Kerr, than Nick Walker, than Hunter Labrada, than all of these guys, Harry Japan too. I don't know if he's gonna win the Mr. Olympia, because I don't know exactly what the judging criteria is, I don't know how much his weaknesses are gonna be exposed on that stage, like the lack of hamstrings, maybe some back development, I don't know how conditioned he's gonna be, but uh, I think, I personally find his physique the most impressive in the world right now, and uh, for James to beat him, 
You know, that's that's too much, honestly. And James is also doing a Yamamoto Pro show, uh, the Italian show, and I think that's where James is going to get his Mr. Olympia qualification. But as far as winning the Arnold Classic UK, I don't think that's going to happen, no. Whatever you guys think, though, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you guys are enjoying this content, please subscribe to this channel. It means a lot. Thank you so much for watching. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.